Hello Internet! Today we're going to talk about Uvicorn and specifically about the great DX of Unicorn being a hot reload server, which means it watches the files that you develop and then it can automatically reload the whole interpreter in order to make sure that you're al always running locally the latest and greatest version of your code. And basically it means that you're not running stale server code and that means you can test your features live as you develop them. This makes a faster development cycle and usually makes us happy when we have a short feedback loop. So let's dive in into how this actually works. This is going to be maybe a read only code uh, video. We're not, I'm not sure yet. Let's see how long can we, uh, will we take us, will it take us to actually find the hot reload stuff. And then if we find that it's like super simple, maybe we'll implement our own thing shortly. So this probably starts in the main file here and let's find the, actually, maybe let's go for a short demo. Okay. So we are now bootstrapping a completely new project. Actually, let's not open it yet. Let's first, uh, poetry init this project and not think about anything else so so much and poetry shell now we have our own virtual environment and now we can play around that environment safely trust okay so we have we are now bootstrapping our small project so we can basically run some hot reload code over it with uvcorn and then we'll try to maybe implement our own loader here which will do the same so poetry um, add fast API uvcorn standard that's nice. And quickly import from fast API, import fast API, app fast API, um, app get root. Sure. And um, if under name, actually, we don't need that because we're going to use the loader from the outside. So new interpreter, local poetry existing. It does not know where we are. Um, let's try to feed it switch python yep it's going to be cleaner okay so let's try to see what happens here uvcorn main app reload port okay awesome so this is going to be just a small demo of what's going on here so we have written our own source code of fast api a small fast api server just serving the simplest route of something so we can now go to localhost 8080 and fetch our message. And now hot reloading means that we can now change this to whatever we want, save that file. And when we reload this, we already have our reloaded server, which is the thing that we want. Now Uvicorn does two things here. First of all, it actually binds to our app object here and then serves it. And the other thing it does is that it actually automatically reloads the whole interpreter once it detects file changes. This is the dash dash reload flag that we see right here and now that we know how this like works in as consumers let's try to dive in into actually the cli and understand how do we go about creating this so as we can see we're basically just importing uvicorn main here and that means that we want to go to dunder init and see that main is important from uvicorn main which makes sense then we go to uvicorn main and then we find the arguments or commands it's and uh, this is running in click which is nice okay good to know and we have our reload flag is flag true default false and let's try to see what happens now that we use this reload flag so we have our bool and we're passing it into run so lo let's go to the front and our reloader is passed into config then this config is probably passed around and if config reload get logger you must pass the applica application you must pass the application as an import string to enable reload or workers dot okay so um let's see what happens now we're passing the config into server probably yeah server with config so let's go to our server and this is probably going to be like some kind of file system polling in the end and this is like my guess so the server is oblivious to the reload thing here um let's see who might do this actual thing might be importer reload or maybe supervisor watchdog reloads at reload, watch files reload. Yeah. Okay. So change reload. So this is going to be multi-process change reload. But who is importing this thing? Probably 
almost nobody. Face loader, face reload. Okay, so we have something here that's called UVCorn Supervisor, and we are importing both change reload and multiprocess, which means that we either probably watch for files that change or that we uh, watch our actual multiprocesses, multiprocess workers that serve our requests. Anyhow, this was actually here. So I missed it when we first looked at the main code here before we dived into our server here. So this is what we have. We have a change reload, which basically accepts the config, accepts our server run function and our socket that we bound before we actually I had. OK, so we, yeah, we this instantiating the server does not bind the socket here we bind the socket either before we do hot reloading or if we have a worker and we have our own uh we need to basically fork out to multiple processes then we need to bind one socket here and then uh, divide the messages between our workers or we let the server probably do its thing right here that is probably a thing that is controlled here but we're now going to dive into change reload because this is the thing that we actually want to try to understand how it works. And let's dive into that. So let's go to Uvicorn supervisor and let's see who is change reload. So change reload is either watch files reload or if that does not exist for some reason, then it will be watchdog reload. Oh, it's watch God. OK, so it's either like using um, probably file system inter um, like syscalls in order to understand what's going on or probably watch god does something simpler watch god reload does it compare content hash i'm that okay so we have some kind of like should watch files I'll filter okay so this is like a lot of configuration but the gist is here we have some kind of watcher and we try to basically trigger the function that we accept here as like as the as the input we go back to this thing here our main below here you can see that we provide a target to run so that means that our supervisors here all of them have a target um a target argument which should be here yeah a callable of optional socket to none and that thing bootstraps the server and now it does like a startup or changes in self if changes, yeah, self restart. And when it's done, it's shutting down. And what it does here is probably, yeah, restart probably does the thing that we want to actually do. And how does restart work? It does, okay, so it either terminates, it terminates the process basically, then either probably it takes over a child process that it already owns, or maybe it allocates a new one, depending on probably the platform that we're running on and then it sends it the function to the uh, the pointer to the server function and the sockets and the configuration and then it bootstraps everything if the process is part of a process okay so this is like handled by someone else but we actually want to manage that because we want to have that in our own fake library maybe so how would we go about actually running this ourselves so we probably don't want to implement our own watchdog. So let's try to like steal somebody's code with pip install. So yeah, poetry add watchdog seems all right. So let's build our own CLI and we're going to import typer because we like having fun from typer import typer and our app, which is typer has only one command, which is F main and it accepts some kind of um, module run, some kind of string, and it always reloads. And what we'd like to do is something in the lines of, if not reload, well, raise not implemented yet. And now if reload, what we'd like to do is, well, we don't need that, we, we are on the fast path. So um, we need to somehow bootstrap this thing. So let's go with something really like dumb, but should work sub process um be open i'm i'm yeah we're not gonna bootstrap unicorn we're not gonna use the unicorn here we're gonna use ourselves um so we have our interp let's say this is just sys executable so we'll have our own exact executable we don't we're not gonna use anything else and sub process run so seems all right and this is going to be something in the lines of how do they import by the way that that's actually okay this is like a curious thing i'm curious about this um 
So they try to actually run this and we're giving them two things. We're actually giving them the module and we're also like having their uh, colon and then the name of the object that they want to bind to. And I'm not sure how that actually works because I've never tried to like programmatically spawn a new Python interpreter from a Python interpreter in that way. We might want to actually look at how they manage these uh, processes. This is actually quite interesting. So if we zoom in on here and we remove the symbols thing and we zoom a little bit more, what we have here is a gets a process and we have some kind of callable, which is already kind of interesting because that means that we already have a callable. Let's try to, oh, this is Uvicorn's callable. Okay. And this is just doing a spawn sub, okay, spawn process target process started. And that means that we don't need to actually look at this from that angle but we need to look at our own server and understand what goes on there so def run it gets self and a list of sockets and then it says async io run serve and serve uh, says started the process uh, percent d colors don't i don't care about them startup main loop and how does that look create protocol listeners where's the module where where is the actual server sgi self on tick counter async i will sleep interesting I, mean, I wasn't aware that was something a server should ever do what i'm sure there's like a ton of issues about this thing right here but this is crazy i mean this shouldn't be like creating overhead because it's like scheduling a sleep on the main loop uh, on the, on the event loop but Still, like, why would you schedule these kinds of things? Where's the actual like bootstrapping of the module? I'm like curious, and I'm not sure that we're gonna see it quite easily. Protocols, HTTP. That's probably not it. Maybe it's in the worker, Uvicorn worker. A class for Gunicorn that interfaces with the ASGI consumer callable. Okay, so this looks more like in the area of what we aim for, but still, this is like for. Gunicorn, not for Uvicorn. Oh, importer. That's probably import from string. Oh, yes, this is the thing that we want to actually do. So what we have here is importing the module. And then once we import it, then we try to look up the headers string, which is nice. And then we need to probably somehow access this object instance and we return it. OK. So not too bad. That's actually quite easy to like use. And let's try to understand how to how do we do this ourselves. So we have our let's call that in order to like preserve some kind of like compatibility or something with this thing. We're gonna use our um okay, so our module is going to be let's say module object it's going to be this thing, and we're gonna say something in the lines of def start. This is going just to be with the import stir. And of course, we're going to use import lib and not this module. And we're going to try and accept module not found there and just say something in the lines of um, raise. Actually, you know what? Let, let, let's just let it air out and not think about it too hard. And get adder is all right. And yeah, object start seems like the good thing to do. Object uh, call. Let's say this is our interface this is like what we expect things to be and we could now basically bootstrap everything so while true while should reload yeah while true whatever um try start that keyword interrupt sys exit is that a thing no we can just you know we don't need we don't even need a sub process right now so we just need to basically try to we don't need this at all which is nice i don't want to meddle with sub processes and interpreters right now and actually let's say for change in reload watcher which is something that we don't know still what it does but yeah else yeah we can just say change the text head and that's it and of course the first start is somewhere here just because we're not gonna actually we can implement that in the reload watcher so let's understand what we do with the, this reload watcher this is an iterable of none that's it and import watch god watch god watcher watch this that thing not find reference default watcher python watcher sure seems all right what do we do with this so check is not a thing that i would want to do i want i'd want that to be like not in polling would like with, I'd like that to be like with 
stating the thing or is there a watch there no there is no watch there maybe let's just rtfm rename to watch file okay so apparently this is not relevant poetry remove watch god poetry add watch files and let's watch files then so this looks just like the thing i want yep and what do we get in return we get already an iterable a generator amazing so we don't need even to have our own watcher we just need to do this and we can just import watch files in the top level and i think we got our hot reloading thing let's try to un uh, run this we actually need to okay so we need to run python um what do i call this cli and we needed to give this an import stir so we just need to say main app and does app actually do the thing that we want let's just define our own main here for just simplicity import un unicorn run host yeah i know that copilot does not like does not like to autocomplete 0000 because this is insecure in some sense so this should basically work maybe Let's try to like have this and it's quitting because we have not said if under name main app. Yep, not implemented yet. And reload should be true because this is what we came here to do. No path was found about pi. So paths should just be this and paths should be, yep, everything. Let's just watch main pi for a minute just to be simple and filter, no filters. Just let's watch the, the file that we want to watch. And this does not look like it's stuck. So maybe in port 8000, we have our own server. No, was it 8000? 8000? 8080, sorry. 8080, not yet. Let's try to see what's going on here. Um, maybe, first of all, in the CLI, let's have our logging, get logger, logger, logging set level, maybe just that, logging debug, stream handler, how is it going with the formatter, like there is something, I believe I forgot something here, like how do we, the formatter, sure, whatever, so this now has some kind of logging, and we can do here, go here and this is info let's zoom let's try to make some changes here like saving and it says call is missing positional arguments scope receives sent okay so this looks like it's actually doing something and that's because we needed to go with main here Ooh, and now okay so we do need to somehow like handle the first change and we have our hot reload working though so this is actually hello hot reload and let's go here and this is not working as i'd expect it to be Shit. <laughs> this does not work why does this not work so it watched the files exactly once and then died so first of all if we reach the end um no this is not no changes this is quitting let's just go here and it's watching main pi how do we say watch everything here? Let's just go with this. This should now reload it also on itself, which is not the thing that we'd want, but sure, well, why not? So interesting. So it's not unable to, ooh, I see. So this is not actually a good thing because right now it's waiting for my interrupt in order to handle this quitting thing. So let's try to understand how we debug this because we need to have this watcher like interrupt and kill this thing so how do we cancel that um so raise interrupt that looks like maybe a thing that we want to do raise interrupt force polling recursive ignore rust timeout stop event abstract event step debounce watch filter change um just so we'll have the better context here what we're trying to do is we're trying to have our hot reload actually pull the files correctly what happens now is that every time we call start this blocks this watcher from actually doing its thing and that is basically means that we're not we're unable to like get the state of our parlor and reload which is not the thing that we'd want to actually happen so i say maybe we do something else which is start this on a thread and then we can just join the thread before we do anything so let's start with t equals threading thread this is probably terrible but what can i say oh so, yeah no the target is start with import stir um target yeah that's the syntax and then we can say t start and here we can always say t join this should work or if t 
he is alive is that a thing yep we'd like to join the thread and now we can do this thing where or change let's actually have a log here starting yeah this thing exactly and we can now this is our let's say work like this is our um want this in a factory like a, a, let's just call this worker factory yep so this always returns like an initialized new thread that we'd like to um now that we want we'd want to spawn one and for change in this what we need to do is something like kill this so how do we kill a running thread is it possible to send some kind of interrupt or like cancel it maybe this is why they used like a sub process in order to basically have this as a thing that you can send signals to easily this is quite the cancel how do you cancel thread python threading cancel timer object timer will wait before executing the action yeah, this does not look like the thing that i want because i'd like something that basically is not the, the dependent on this i truly want something that is completely yeah something like I want to abort things. Um, I found kill thread. Stoppable thread. Stop, stop event step. Okay, this looks like a thing that I could basically try to generate a bad pattern to kill a thread abruptly, but in any way, think of the following use case. Um, build as well. Yeah, so this does not look good, but we'd want to basically kill everything. And maybe this is where having this as a sub process is actually good because killing a sub process does kill and clean up everything. So let's go with um, a process, I guess, just because a process could do this. So if we go with multi processing process, everything here should look kind of the same but if i remember correctly processes have kill yes and that means that we can now restart our worker and this should be fine so everything needs to be killable and like do the proper cleaning up hopefully and this might work let's find out and let's run this and it says rust notify no paths found for our pi and that means let's just go with main pi again just so we keep our lives like on on scope and now it says that it's here hello hot reload that's i will believe this when we see it would actually be working so let's edit the message here and say hot reload and here still not working so this is still like somehow blocking or the change is not actually detected if i interrupt this then it says keyboard interrupt in osp id but this is not the thing that we want to actually see. So let's go back to debugging our CLI and for change in watch files. Oh, I forgot to log this. So change detected. Yep, let's run this again. Let's try to edit this and have some spaces in here. And this is says detected changes in main pi. And now again. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened before, but that does that mean that now we can say one, two, three, four, reload, and this is working and now we have this here and save yeah okay so we have hot reload working now which is nice awesome so we have now our watch file which uh, our file watcher which basically pull uh, somehow like with cooperation with the operating system that changes in tracked files and then it kills the previous process and bootstraps the new one um since this is, but we, we are doing it in a different way than Uvicorn because this is now agnostic to actual the actual implementation of the Python file. Like this could be a server, this could be an HTTP server, a database, a caching layer, like anything that you'd want basically could work with this. This does not is not bound to even the IP thing. Like it's not not necessarily need to be bound to a thread. This could be any kind of worker that is want to be hot reloadable, um, which is cool. And I like it. And as we can see, like the implementation is quite simple here. We just have our own like test thingy where we just gave it like this main function, which we know needs to run. And we have our reloader here which all it does is apart from like the horrible logging thing here that's just because i wanted to have some kind of like proper logging what we're doing is we have our own worker factory we could actually like merge some of these things into here but never mind that what we have is if we're reloading we have our worker started and for every new change that we detect in our watched files we kill the previous worker and bootstrap a new one and this is probably not relevant like if we have this we can probably do something like try um actually maybe in the lines of try and then finally kill 
this should be all right because we either have our worker throw something let's actually maybe even test that so here we have let's like reload the cli itself which is not bootstrapped by itself and now if we uh, run in command c it says aborted and it shuts down somehow cleanly because there are no more changes this worker is wonder by the way how this worked i'm, I'm guessing like if we see here keyboard interrupt and let's re-erase that because we don't want to actually silence that and yep keyboard interrupt and then it's aborted and everything is fine but i'm curious why we're not seeing oh so it's raising so we're not we'll never see this quitting thing because we're never there. Like this is the aborted is, is coming from typer, which just gave us nice handling of errors. So in conclusion, what we have here is a small loop that pulls files. We have a worker that we bootstrap, which is a multiprocessing worker right now, just because it makes cleanup and bootstrapping way cleaner than threading right now, because thread, threads in Python are not cancelable, not killable cleanly. And we'd like to free all resources that this process has. We might not want to actually use kill. We might want to use something like signal terminate. Terminate sounds like a proper, better thing to do here. And we terminate a new process, bootstrap a new one, and then loop again as long as we like in watching the facts. Once we have an interrupt, we just log it and still let everything bubble up completely because we'd like to everyone to exit cleanly. And that's it. This is like a small bootstrap CLI for hot reloading. It's not useful. Use your toolmaker's hot reloader if you have one. And if not, then you can use maybe this kind of like script for a reference implementation and hope you learned something new and you enjoyed this. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.